stuff. <laughs> Uh, this is not part of my 10 minutes, but having listened to the other speakers, I, I, I can't resist sharing this. Uh, the stuff about the ANC ruling until Jesus comes. Uh, my friend Aubrey Matiki, who some of you may know, who writes also writes columns, uh, is actually claims to be, I'm not quite sure how it works, but claims to be a reasonably serious Christian. So when, when Jacob Zuma said this, Aubrey wrote this wonderful column in which he said he was so excited to learn that his saviour was coming 20 years earlier than he'd had to <laughs> <laughs> he, he thanked me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, that's got nothing to do with anything else I'm going to say. Um, look, I, I, I was asked to stick to a fairly narrow brief, but, but some of my colleagues have, have ex extended a bit, so I'll, I'll go somewhere in between. Uh, and the first point I want to make is that I, I do think that if we look at the numbers, and it is useful, I mean, most of what I do at the moment is political theory, but when I do this stuff, it's useful to look at numbers. Uh, the numbers do uh, support those uh, who argue that the ANC is in no particular danger of losing office anytime soon. Uh, if you have a look, uh, and I find this quite striking, uh, you know, there were all sorts of extraneous factors. If you have a look at what happened to the ANC vote in this election and you compare it to the previous election, it is just about identical. Uh, the ANC lost 3.7 percentage points last time. It lost 3.8 this time. If you work it out as a percentage, it lost 5.6 last time, 5.4 this time. Uh, and that indicates that if the ANC is in decline, uh, then uh, you're talking about a very slow puncture rather than a blowout. Uh, certainly on those statistical trends, uh, the ANC is, in, 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 is, is, is safe for, for 15 to 20 years. Uh, under current conditions. The second point is that, like my colleagues, I, I noticed the urban vote, and I think the urban vote is very interesting. Uh, and uh, like some of my colleagues, I got carried away by the urban vote, and I said, the ANC is in trouble in the urban areas. Uh, I then went back and did some, uh, some extra maths and, and came to the conclusion that actually the ANC isn't in trouble in the urban areas. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. Uh, that is that in local government, we have, of course, a uh, half of the seats are uh, constituencies, are, are wards. Uh, and it's, it's, it's interesting to me that South Africans who get terribly enthusiastic about the constituency system seem to have forgotten how much the constituency system does to, to distort voter preferences. Uh, just for information, the, the, you know, the introductory speech mentioned Narendra Modi. Um, the BJP has just uh, frighteningly uh, won the biggest uh, electoral uh, land majority in India in 30 years. It got 31% of registered voters. That's what constituency systems do. So if you look at our urban areas, uh, the ANC, if you look at the areas which the ANC controls in uh, Nelson Mandela Metro, Jobek, Tswane, Ekurileni, etc., it would have to lose 30 percentage points to lose those wards. So the ANC, even if it drops below, even if it drops into the mid-40s, the ANC is going to start the next municipal elections uh, with about 40% uh, of the, the, the seats already sewn up. Uh, and therefore, it's not realistic to expect uh, uh, there to be uh, uh, hung uh, uh, councils in any of the major metros. Uh, maybe Nelson Mandela Bay at a push, because by my calculation, because of the demographics there, the ANC would uh, have to go down to about 40% in, 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 in Nelson Mandela Metro to lose control. Uh, but certainly, uh, uh, just to give you an indication, in, 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 in Joburg, by my calculations, the ANC vote would have to go down to 35% for it to lose control of Johannesburg. So we're not talking about some great electoral shift. Uh, if you look at the DA vote, and colleagues have talked about that, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's crude rule of th thumb stuff. Uh, the DA does now have a black constituency, but I think in the main that black constituency came from COPE. Uh, it didn't come from the ANC. Uh, uh, the uh, EFF, according to my colleague over here, has done very well. Uh, I, I, I remain the, the sole dissenter on that. Uh, uh, I don't think underperforming COPE uh, uh, in 2009 is all that impressive, particularly if you're presenting yourself as, 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 as the voice of the grassroots. I, I agree with those 
uh, column Johnny Steinberg wrote earlier this this week, uh, who who see the EFF as uh, uh, as an expression of 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 a particular middle class sentiment, and there's obviously a distinct uh, lid on 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 how much mileage that has. So we're not looking at some great electoral game changer, unless, of course, uh, you were to have another split in the ANC. Uh, and that really would make a difference, and I therefore have argued that what is happening inside the ANC is 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 is, is very important at the moment. Uh, there are intense factional disputes, uh, which I don't think have died down. Uh, I, they will be around. Uh, there are all sorts of regional uh, and factional balancing acts the ANC have to perform in the next five years, and it's not guaranteed that they will perform them adequately, and therefore other splits should happen. Uh, and while I agree with those colleagues who talk about the kind of lock the ANC has, I don't think that one should underestimate the effect which ANC splits can have on the electorate. And just as an, as, as, as an indication, uh, an empirical indication, go back and have a look at what happened in Plokwer a while ago in, in the northwest province. Uh, there was a split in the ANC in Plokwer. The ANC vote in most wards went down from 90% to 50%, and in three wards it went below 50% and the ANC lost the wards. So I think that there's a lesson in there, uh, and the lesson is that you know if those huge ANC majorities are going to come down, it's going to be because of another split. All of this tends to suggest uh, that a workers' party of, of the kind that NUMSA is talking about uh, has uh, considerable potential. Certainly not potential to get anywhere near uh, a majority, uh, but in theory a potential certainly to get uh, 10 or 15 percent of the vote, which would uh, po quite possibly deprive the ANC of a majority. However, that assumes all sorts of things. Uh, it assumes uh, that NUMSA has the kind of roots uh, among the electorate, that it has the organization on the ground, that the, uh, the left wing of the labor movement have that kind of capacity. Uh, and I think that, uh, that, that, that serious doubts have to be raised about that. So uh, the fact that there is room for a real left-wing party, because I don't see the EFF as a left-wing party, it's, it's in my view it's a, it's a, it's a right-wing right, right nationalist party, uh, that left-wing space is available, but I think we need to ask serious questions about whether uh, the, 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 the trade union movement in its current state or the left of the trade union movement in its current state has the capacity to capitalize on this. Maybe they can make some headway, uh, but I, don't, I, I think one has to be cautious about that. Uh, does that mean uh, that things are, are necessarily simply going to remain the same? Well, not necessarily, um, because uh, I don't think, and, and I would certainly I disagree with Nomenisa on one issue. Uh, I do think that electoral politics matters, not in the sense uh, that uh, if we have uh, circulation of elites, we, 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 we have wonderful accountability and we all live happily ever after. I would agree with you that that, 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 is, that tends to happen more in the abstract than in the concrete. But I think certainly, if, 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 in my view, uh, having worked on, on citizen action with colleagues across the world and, and having been very influenced uh, by the work, for example, of Partha Chatterjee, who writes about slum, slum dwellers in, 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 in Kolkata and the way in which they're able to, 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 to make their voice heard, uh, that electoral competition creates opportunities for citizens. I think, I think that's uh, the, the way I would phrase it. So if you look at the way... Uh, I mean, we did an exercise... Uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough to be part of a 12-country study in which we looked at citizen action to influence national policy in 12 countries, uh, and the one startling theme was that in each one of those 12 countries, electoral politics mattered. But it didn't matter in the simplistic sense that if you don't like these guys, you voted for the other guys and then they did what you wanted to do. It was that electoral politics created opportunity, created leverage, which if organized citizens use that particular leverage, uh, uh, has certain effects. Uh, I made the point the other day that if you look in our own context, even in a situation uh, of, of, of an ANC lock on, 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 on national government at one stage, uh, certainly the work I've done on HIV and AIDS uh, suggests that 
uh, during the darkest period of AIDS denialism in this country, your chances of getting treatment were vastly enhanced if you happened to be in the two provinces where there were electoral competition. Uh, and, and, and I think that there's a lesson in that. So that's, that's the one area I think opportunities are created now which were not there before. The other point which I think is, is worth watching in terms of uh, talk of a social compact uh, is that I argued before the election, and I think I can demonstrate this by reference to the ANC manifesto and the way in which the economic section was phrased, that certainly the ANC's worry uh, about losing voter support before the election was, was impelling it towards de developing a negotiation position on social and economic issues. Uh, if you look at the ANC manifesto, for the first time it actually has a set of of proposals, uh, and it also has a set of, of, of carrots that it's offering business in return. Now, the obvious question that was raised before the election, given that this was probably inspired uh, by concern at losing voter support, uh, is there enough pressure to make that continue? Uh, and I think the tentative answer, these answers always have to be tentative, is yes. Uh, I think despite the points I've made, despite the, the, sl the slow puncture rather than the meltdown, despite the fact that probably the metros aren't really uh, going to go to the opposition, uh, I think that uh, the ANC has enough reason to be concerned uh, about a gradual erosion of support uh, to at least make some effort uh, to, to, to start those social and economic negotiations. Of course, whether those negotiations will actually have any traction, uh, we have to see. Uh, but I think certainly the political impetus to start to, 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 to make them happen is there. So I think I'll leave it at that.